Hello, I'm the Reverend Sarah Facemeyer Lamb, pastor of Sand Hill United Methodist Church in Boaz, West Virginia, and pastor of Wayside United Methodist Church in Vienna, West Virginia. Our gospel lesson is from John chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This Sunday is the fourth Sunday of Easter and Every year, this is Good Shepherd Sunday. It's a powerful and meaningful image, Jesus, our Good Shepherd. Many find strength and comfort and encouragement in the image and in the words, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We hear Jesus speak the words. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And he is speaking the words across the ages personally to us. And yet Jesus' original audience was a diverse group, vaguely referred to as the Jews, which included disciples, Pharisees, and others. Some were for him, some were against him, and some weren't sure what to make of him. Right before Jesus launched into his good shepherd discourse, he healed a man who was born blind. In John chapter 9, verses 1 through 12, the blind man received his sight when Jesus made mud out of his saliva and some dirt. He spread the mud on the man's eyes and told him to wash in the pool of Siloam. And then in John chapter 9, verses 13 to 34, the Pharisees, they investigated the healing. They asked the formerly blind man, who healed you? And what did he do? How did he heal you? They asked the man's parents. 
Was he really born blind? And then they questioned the man again, and they insisted that Jesus was a sinner. And when he replied, you do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. And because of the formerly blind man's words, they drove him out. They kicked the man out of their faith community. And then John chapter 9 verses 35 to chapter 10 verse 21. It's Jesus' response to the man being expelled from his community. Our gospel lesson today is part of that response. In chapter 10, Jesus set out to answer the questions about his identity. Who is he? Can he be trusted? Is he really from God or is he just another false teacher? Jesus began by describing who he is not. He is not one who climbs into the sheepfold over the wall instead of through the gate. He is not a thief or a bandit who does not care about the sheep. Thieves and bandits only care about their own gain. By contrast, Jesus, the shepherd, he enters the sheepfold openly by means of the gate. He is recognized by the gatekeeper who opens the gate for him. He is recognized by the sheep who know his voice. When he calls his sheep by name, they follow him and he leads them out to pasture. The sheep will not follow a stranger, but instead will flee from one whose voice they do not recognize. Jesus' audience, they didn't know what he was talking about. They didn't understand what he was saying. He could have changed direction and spoken plainly to them, but instead he continued speaking poetically, changing up the metaphor a bit, saying, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. He describes all who came before him as thieves and bandits to whom the sheep did not listen. Again, Jesus says, I am the gate. And then adds, whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. Whereas the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Jesus says, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The function of the gate was to keep the sheep together in the sheepfold. During the, during the night, safe from thieves and predators. During the day, the gate was open so that they could go out and follow their shepherd to find pasture. The gate and the shepherd worked together for the well-being of the sheep so that the flock thrived. And sometimes the shepherd was the gate. Sheepfolds were enclosures with walls, often stones stacked on top of one another. Sometimes sheepfolds were located in a cave. There was a narrow opening for an entrance. And when the sheep entered the sheepfold, the shepherd would carefully look over each one, searching for 
injuries that needed to be treated or other concerns that needed to be addressed like burrs and brambles. Once each one's needs had been attended to and after all the sheep were in the fold, the shepherd would sit or lay down right in the door of the sheepfold. The shepherd was literally the gate for the sheep. He kept the sheep from wandering off and he kept thieves and ferocious animals from stealing one of the flock. The shepherd placed himself between the sheep and any danger. Jesus is the gate. The good news is that Jesus is the gate into an abundant life with God. How do we who are sinful and imperfect enter into a life of fellowship with God who is holy and completely perfect through Jesus. Through Jesus there is forgiveness of sin. There's freedom from the power of sin and death. Jesus feeds and cares for our souls. Jesus is the gate into God's Fold. And I'm thankful that Jesus is the gate. Not me, not my preferences or prejudices, not my cherished traditions. Who did Jesus welcome into the fold? Fishermen, tax collectors, Mary Magdalene who had been possessed. Jesus welcomed those who were outsiders, those who were on the fringes of society. He welcomed the Roman centurion, the Samaritan woman. He welcomed women and children. Jesus welcomed a committed persecutor of Jesus' followers. He welcomed Saul, who we know as the Apostle Paul. And through the fishermen, the tax collectors, the women, Paul, and many others, through their testimony and teaching and ministry, how many more have been welcomed into the fold? How many more have come to know the shepherd that leads us into abundant life? Jesus is the gate, not you or me, and yet, through our testimony, through our teaching, through our lives, others are welcomed into the fold. Others are welcome to come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. And let us be careful while we point to the gate, not to become gate keepers who think we can judge who belongs and who doesn't, who think we can judge who is welcome and who isn't. In May of 1742, 280 Years ago, John Wesley arrived in Newcastle upon Tyne. He wrote about what he found there, who he found there. He said, I was surprised. So much drunkenness, cursing, and swearing, even from the mouths of little children. Do I never remember to have seen and heard before in so small a compass of time? What would many of us do if we found that kind of situation? How would many people respond? How awful, what a hopeless situation. And perhaps others would move on hoping to find a more suitable, respectable, or receptive audience 
for the gospel message. How did Wesley respond? He wrote, surely this place is ripe for him who came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. John Wesley expected good. He expected God to make a difference in the lives of those people. And God did. Jesus is the gate. Let us do all that we can through our prayers, our words, our caring, and our lives to help others find their way to and through the gate. Amen. And now receive these words of blessing. Go in peace to love and serve God and neighbor.